Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Bentley, and I'm here to present my Master of Design thesis, Vacancies and Attenuated Presences, a counter-memorial swimming pool for Waitara. I'd like to thank the Link International Scientific and Artistic Committee for giving me the opportunity to present my practice, and another thank you to all those in attendance today. Histories, places, and people of long past epochs are witnessed by memorials. Their utterances can be felt and heard if one is in a place to listen. Memorials are the progenitors of these voices. They provide locative markers in the present for which to develop a conversational understanding of the past, present, and future landscapes we occupy in relation to one another. In this narrative sense, memorials can be looked at as Seitsuga, contemporary witnesses. This project posits the memorial swimming pool as a space or method of alternative memory, one that can allow us to engage in such contextual, temporal, and perceptive dialogues. The practice unfolds over two stages, fieldwork and intervention. The fieldwork section details expeditions to three memorial pools found across Te Ika a Maui, the North Island of New Zealand. Methods of site-specific inhabitation identify and accrete the phenomenal language of these memorials. Transient, mundane images are critically viewed as markers of counter memorial and as evidence of the changing roles and temporalities of the designated sites. This language is then exercised in the intervention phase, the designing of a speculative memorial pool located in Waitara, Taranaki. The design seeks to reframe the existing Waitara swimming pools and the Waitara River as a new memorial landscape through a confluence of mnemonic provocations, derived largely from my experience at the three fieldwork sites. There is a distinction that must be made between swimming and reflective pools. Countless prolific memorials employ appropriately grand or intimate bodies of water within their schemes, often functioning as mirrors, quiet reprieves, or material elaborations of an intent to evoke reflection. Walking through these reflective basins, however, would typically be considered a transgression or mark of disrespect. Memorial swimming pools act contrary to this. In New Zealand, these are typically publicly owned swimming baths with icons that recall the dead, usually of the Great War and World War II. These are not sedate, quiet spaces as many memorials are. They overlap experiences of gleeful children diving into their local community pool with the somber reticence of acknowledging trauma and loss. They are curious, disjunctive spaces, particularly when viewed in comparison to the platonic image of memorials and monuments of a Western paradigm. To many, the platonic image of memorial is a monolithic obelisk, figure, or plaque, but this idea of memorial relates to a particular understanding of how and what we remember. In Tikanga Māori, for example, memorial is landscape. Fenua carries the records of narratives of Whakapapa. Philosopher Karl Mika describes that death and life exist within each other as an accompaniment of the earth, counteractions of a whole, associated, co-constitutive entity. This is mirrored by Western concepts such as Michel Foucault's description of memorial as heterotopic space, a locative marker or counteraction on the position that I occupy. Through their haptic and functional oddity, the project views memorial poles as an opportunity for counter-memorial. These spaces question the global history or heterochrony that results in Western archetype, as historian Veronica Tello describes. They allow us to view multiple temporalities and incise past, present, and future. Tello compares Maya Lin's Vietnam Veterans Memorial and the other Vietnam Memorial by Chris Burden as an example. Lin's monument takes the form of a vast, segmented granite wall descending into the grounds of the Washington Constitution Gardens. The polished stone lists some 58,000 names inscribed within its surface. Burden's work echoes Lin's monumental landscape. The confrontational effigy honors the opposing side, the millions of Vietnamese soldiers and civilians lost within the same war. The viewer flips daunting, page-proportioned boards laden with thousands of Vietnamese names, arbitrarily generated from phone books. Professor James E. Young has been lauded in his work on Counter Memorial and writes that these spaces have the task to return the burden of memory to visitors themselves by forcing them into an active role. Here, Burden forces intimate observation in order to identify and differentiate the names from one another, generating a series of overwhelming and claustrophobic images. Earlier, I classified memorials as being Seitsuga, or contemporary witnesses. I embodied this quality of witnessing through my approach to researching each site. Memorials are unique in the way they are experienced. They designate boundaries, impose expectations, and await ritual participation. I felt that by producing a series of first-hand memories of these memorials, I could better unpack their effectual and material narratives. I identified and visited three existing memorial pools in Te Ika a Maui, the North Island. Manatahi, Otorohanga, and Clive. These sites range from three to seven hours drive each way. The approach to the fieldwork practice centered around site and the peeling of information from place, aiming to uncover clues to past events, identifying geological, anthropological, and spatial discoveries through a pseudo-archaeology or dilettante quasi-method. This eventuated into a series of archives and fieldwork volumes, compilations of notes, drawings, and photographs. 
Each volume produced from this excavation is in a way a memorial witness to these sites. Anthropologist Michael Tosig considers methods of witnessing such as drawing to be more than the result of seeing. The witnesses' drawings are artifacts, talismans that doubt and inflict, mysterious, complicated, and powerful. Witnessing is being implicated in a process of judgment that opposes the staid and stable prescribed orders of operation or constraints imposed by seeing, such as the questions of who am I and what is that? Tosig references philosopher Walter Benjamin's want for a dialectical optic, one that perceives the everyday as the impenetrable and the impenetrable as the everyday. This shares much with the framework of Guy Debord's psychogeography, a method I employed during my expeditions. This wayward and sporadic inhabitation focuses on spontaneous observation of phenomena, inviting the viewer to be drawn in by the attractions of the terrain and the encounters found there, asking them to respond to unseen currents, fixed points, and vortexes of space, clarifying sight by emplacing ourselves in the obscure. Critic Tom Spooner characterizes this as a tool to unearth the uncanny and the unfamiliar. A favorite of the strange points I discovered were the now defunct skimmers that sit either side of the Manutahi pool. These parallel obelisks once filtrated the pool, but now only produce intermittent overflows, choked watery breaths. As they overflow, they devise new reflective surfaces below, pools, mirrors atop the broken sections of the surrounding concrete path. First built in the 1940s, the aged Manutahi pool is now a private family garden, absorbed by an adjacent property as recently as within the past three years. Avian ceramics and garden doodads populate the titular facade spelling Memorial Baths. Planted pots and freshly turned soil border the edges of the grounds, sidling their way closer towards the void where the plaques once stood before being removed to the neighboring cemetery. I later noticed a chicken coop sitting by the east side of the pool wall. Though I found it empty, the site's old bones were now home to new life. Behind the coop sat the once for changing rooms, within which I could hear the undulating speaking and squawking of a flock of chickens belonging to the pool's new owners. It is in these small moments of transmutation where I experience the new functions of these sites. The intervention presents a speculative design for Waitara Taranaki, which reframes the Waitara swimming pool as a memorial pool. Though the fieldwork originated the project as a singular entity, the design proposal seeks to evidence the same shared language of the memorial pool as seen throughout the fieldwork. Thresholds, vacancies, and absent or present bodies construct a series of mnemonic provocations that localize memorial to the individual. They are inherently contradictory of the archetypal Western monument as I discussed in my exegesis through their making use of haptic disjunction, the overlapping of somber reticence and recreation. The project presents the site as a counter memorial in this way, formed by inhabitation, and as a result, is animated by both presences and absences. The scheme's entrance is an overgrown pavilion framed between the stop bank and an abstracted form of the existing changing rooms. To enter the memorial, the viewer must step over a grated flow of water. This encounter would be anything but memorable when walking through an urban setting. As I have articulated it, however, its presence is foreshadowed and embellished, giving this mundane moment an outsized significance. The guiding concrete wall is perforated at the intersection between its base and the ground, offering glimpses of the water that animates the grate. Built up by foreshadowing, the step across the grate evidences a decision to pass a memorial boundary. This is treated not as a transgression, but as a necessary lived behavior. This perhaps extends the boundaries of the memorial outward and asks the viewer to consider the habitual crossings of thresholds found within the everyday. At the entrance to the shower corridors is an interstice that presents several cuts and vacancies. These are animated by bodies and atmospheric condition. The waist-high frame reveals a glimpse at the body of the pool. The rectangular floor cut curates a view of present or absent and passing figures, likely seen dripping a trail of water in their transition from pool to pool. Above is a timber lattice, consisting of bare weatherboards repurposed from the pre-intervention changing rooms, layered and aligned with the adjacent stop bank. These rows are positioned 2.5 meters above the tile floor, barely out of reach for most individuals. A vaguely body-sized rectangle pierces both the lattice as well as the roof. The cut draws a focused light into the faintly lit interior. Rain is allowed in, both to saturate the hanging timber and to pull on the tiled floor below. Each tile is proportioned to an average step, similar to the above motions of reaching. These tiles are cut with three triangular gradients leading down to the floor, causing rainwater to spill outward and paint the tiles as a reflective surface. The curated subtractions establish the conceptual language of the mnemonic systems at play within the pool, presences and absences, figures belonging to or missing from the landscape. Lithic bodies can be seen peeking out from the water, along with corresponding staircases that associate various types of movement and inhabitation. Swimming, stepping, with bodies that carry a perceived impunity to time. Such moments contrast hyper-ephemeral actions like rippling waves with atemporal objects. These actions like diving and crashing into pools, primarily seen in the diving pool above this image, have consequences. 
The water is displaced from someone crashing into the pool, causes an accretion of water to form. There are cuts into the ground that hold this water, and accrete and generate as a result of inhabitation. These devise new reflective surfaces, as seen during my field work. They form small moments of immediate and tangible acknowledgement of others, reflection and self-positioning. There are intimate glimpses at sites like this, where you may capture the half-evaporated footsteps of someone no longer there, as you ascend the aforementioned diving board, for example. This inquiry has further clarified my developing role as a design practitioner and as a witness to the everyday. It has caused me to question the ways in which I process, traverse, and speak through space. This inquiry has been instigated by confusion and curiosity. However, the curious itch has not yet been scratched. Even if distant or hidden, the voices of sites such as the memorial pool can always be heard if one is in a place to listen. Bound within the everyday, present and absent. Thank you for listening.